1964 Ferrari 275 GTS was a little two-seater convertible offered at the same time as the 275 GTB Coupe. Although they share the same name, the 275 GTS, S for Spider, or convertible, differs greatly in body style to its drop-dead gorgeous 275 GTB Coupe sibling. Still a hot little boulevard cruiser in its own right, the 275 GTS only shared the same 2400mm or 94.5 inch wheelbase chassis and engine as the GTB Coupe. The 275 GTS was still designed and built by Pininfarina instead of Scaglietti with steel panels except for the aluminium doors, hood and trunk lids. Also, the 275 GTS had a less dramatic allure with its exposed upright headlights and front nose ending at the edge of the headlight recesses. Underneath them, a large eyebrow-shaped turning signal was placed between the wide egg crate grille. The side front fenders had 11 louvers venting the engine bay as seen on the first 500 Superfast, but it got replaced almost immediately by a three-slat configuration also seen on the later production 500 Superfast. The rear fenders had a very slightly raised shoulder line over the recessed trunk lid and the horizontal tail lights under the trunk line were placed above the traditional quiet pipes. But on the chrome bumpers, the overriders looked just a little bulky. The windshield had a side window vent and the Borani wire wheels were standard unlike the alloy set found on the Berlinetta. Inside, the leather seats were not bucketed, but well padded for comfort. The thick veneer dashboard was a mix of 275 GTB long nose with its binnacle and big Veglia ref counter and speedometer tilted towards the driver in a cross-eyed fashion. Four gauges on the center dash included internal fluid pressure and temperature status gauges, as well as the clock. A passenger folding footwell was there for long journeys and the 5-speed exposed chrome metal gate gear lever commanded the rear axle transmission for better weight distribution. Too bad it had the same unreliable draft shaft alignment problem with no torque tube as the Berlinetta, with no limited split differential. The metal gate was nonetheless matched by a chrome ashtray with the Ferrari and Pininfarina emblems on it, making you forget for a moment that this first generation disc brakes were only good for about 5 minutes. Following the all-around disc brakes was the independent suspension fitted on all corners, which made this compact Ferrari livable most of the time with its upright driving position. The 3.3 liters or 200 cubic inch V12 Colombo engine was, as mentioned, the same as the single cam Purbank 275 GTP, but it was detuned for reliability and only was available with the 3 twin shock Weber carburetor package. After being detuned, the 275 GTS produced 260 horsepower at 7000 rpm instead of the 280 at 7600 rpm. This made for a low torque curve, which was reached 500 rpm lower than on the Berlinetta, giving our 275 GTS better CD legs. Everything on the 275 GTS was made for a civilized open-air touring experience, but the GTS could still outrun everything on the street with a top speed of 143 miles per hour or 230 km per hour and a 0 to 62 miles per hour time of 6.5 seconds. The Ferrari 275 GTS only had a two-year production run and never was offered with a 4-cam engine. And with 200 spiders produced, it finally came into its own in the classic car market after being slightly left aside at first. It is important to mention that in 1967, the Ferrari 275 GTS 4 knot spiders were produced at only 10 units. These 275 GTS knot spiders were really the chopped version of the Berlinetta, built specially for Ferrari's first North American importer, Luigi Canetti. Today, the 275 GTS is regarded as what it is, an elegant and discreet open vintage Ferrari with a tractable and reliable V12 just awaiting for the next summer night cruise. Thank you.